and I will adore you. Father, we bow before your presence, for in you there's fullness of joy. Our hearts, we lay them before you, Lord. For you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, my God. There is none like you this morning. Fill us with your peace this morning, O oh Lord. In the midst of confusion, in the midst of pain, in the midst, Lord, of every trial that we see as a church, as people, Lord, as a country, as the nations. We believe in the name of Jesus Christ for our salvation. We believe in the name of Jesus for our deliverance, for our healing, Lord, this morning. We bow before you, Holy Spirit. Without you, there's nothing that we can do, Lord. And Father, I pray that this morning, as I speak through your people, Lord, reach each and every ear, every eye that is watching this. Touch each and every need, Lord, that they may go through now. For you are our solution even in these times, Lord. We bow before your throne, Lord. And we thank you for we know that Jesus is interceding for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you can give us Christ as our Savior. For there is no more condemnation over us, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you this time. Fill us with your peace as you like, my God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen. Thank you, beloved. You are welcome again once more to fellowship with us. This is the great time. We thank God's presence in our midst. And I really wish to say thank you to Brother Vaughn for leading us in worship. And last week we spoke and we said, mercy say no. And we believe God is talking to us continuously as we move forth this week and as we say, wilderness experience. And to win the wilderness can be sometimes or can be prescribed or can be perceived or interpreted differently by those who find themselves in the wilderness, some people might find it being a bad place to be at, while to some could be a perfect place for a start or new opportunities. There are things that when they challenge us or who we are or, or where or they take us from a point of comfort into a point of discomfort, they reveal more of us or they teach us new things that we can do as believers or as people. So now wilderness can be a desolate place, can be a place where it really isolates you from all these things. It can be again prescribed as a barren land where there's no life in it or unpopulated area linked with form of dangers that is there or that can be experienced and in most cases wilderness is a place that doesn't give the the form of normal life as we we know it it, it challenges one in terms of how it relates when one finds himself or herself in a land or in a state of being in the wilderness and in the book of luke chapter 1 verse 80 that's amazing. That's funny. We get John the Baptist who chose to live in the wilderness. And he says that the word of God says he grew up and became strong in spirit. He grew up and became strong in the spirit. 
Then he lived out in the wilderness until he began his ministry to Israel. Now for brother John, wilderness became a place of enhancement. That very desolate place, that very dangerous place, or that place that doesn't have this form of life that we would like to have. He found himself in it and he chose to be in it and out of it. It was a place of new beginnings for him. What was looked like something that is terrible. John found it being a place that he can enhance himself spiritually growing and in his ministry. It perfected him in his ministry as he goes forth. And now when we, 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 we the, 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 the subject that we'll be talking more on today, it is the experience of Israel. But now there's a first point that I came up in terms of Israel. I, I didn't get an Israel that is full of uh, uh, thanksgiving, but I came across Israel with who began to be rebellious because of the conditions that he was going through when you read Exodus 16, we read verse 1 to 2. Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elim and journeyed into the wilderness of Sin. Between Elim and Mount Sinai, they arrived there on the 15th day of the second month. One month after leaving the land of Egypt, take note of that. One month after leaving the land of Egypt, there too the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. These are the people that receive the word of God and say that, tighten your belts, prepare yourself, put your sandals on, you are going to the promised land. Put the blood on the doors so that the angel of death, when he comes, may pass over your houses. That was a moment of excitement. That was a moment of rejoicing before the Lord that ultimately deliverance has arrived. But the word of God says, hardly a month after taking a journey, they began to rebel and spoke badly against the spiritual leadership that God has placed before them. Now Israel passed through the desert. It's a fact that they were in a, a very desolate place, which was a very hostile environment, one to find himself in, a place of no sign of life as one would love it to be. But again, it was a perfect place or moment to learn new things or it was a better place of new beginnings in their life and we're talking about people that have experienced so much intervention that was brought by god in many ways in their lives but their greatest enemy was their character and that's what we need to guard against not only when times are tough, even in good times, we need to guard against our characters. For they will lift us up or might pull us down. Now difficult times lead us as people to, to, to resort to a defensive mode in order to try to find means on how we counter what is happening around us. And in that moment it is when we get into a mode of being in distress. And being in distress raises more of doubt in us. Being in distress brings forth challenges our faith in the Lord. For we tend to take a defensive mode. And in a defensive mode, it is when you will begin to complain. And not only complaining, but complain leads in missing the to acknowledge 
what God has done in the previous time and what God is doing currently and what God will always do before us. And that steals from us or limits us in operating in our faith. And as we miss to acknowledge that God has provided before and will continue even in difficult times, we need to guard against that. We can't go on as normal in our country or all over the world as we speak today. We know the state of the country where it is. But we need to stand on the word of God when he says, I will be with you. I will be your father. I will be your guidance. I have sent Holy Spirit to be the counsel. I have sent Holy Spirit upon you to teach you. I have sent Holy Spirit to be your guidance. But when we are in the wilderness experience, we forget the victories that God has brought in our lives before we reach the wilderness. And it is at the point of being in the wilderness where we need to focus on Christ, our author and finisher of our faith. For victory is certain and is, it is at hand. There are some form of victories that are just at hand, but we cannot perceive that because of false theories that we listen to, because of doubting the presence of the waking power of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. But I want to give you an assurance this morning that victory is certain and victory it is at hand. But because of our attitudes, we miss that. Israel on the verge of entering Canaan, but failed due to their attitudes. We should not allow our situations to determine our attitudes. For your position, it is your attitude. The position that you take, it tells us more of your attitude. For we become blind of, of victories that God has brought. It's like we, we begin to miss this. We miss this new testimonies. We miss these wonderful stories that the Lord has done wonderful things in our life. And as we that, we have failed in proclaiming, we have failed in declaring the goodness of the Lord. The psalmist says, I shall live, I shall not die, to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. And that's why we are standing here. That is why we are alive, to proclaim the goodness of the work of the Lord. It is just a moment of a wilderness experience. It doesn't mean it is the end, but I fully believe that it is a new beginning in our lives. When you read in the book of Numbers 14, 10 to 12, you read it at your spare time. The Bible says Moses sent out the spies and these guys, they came back after sending these spies, they brought the report and there were those who were carrying a negative report and say, we have seen the giants. We have seen the sons of Anax. We cannot be able to take the land. Even when God has said, I give you a promise of this. But there was those who stood with a negative report. But this morning, I want to, that in our lives, may the spirit of Caleb, may the spirit of Joshua rise within us. The spirit that says in the midst of negativity, in the midst of things that we hear, but we shall give the good report about what the Lord can do for us. For Caleb and, and, and Joshua stood up and say that God is, has given us this land. We are not supposed to be occupied, our minds with bad reports of all these theories that we hear. But we should believe what the word of God says. For when we fill our hearts with uh, negative reports, our hearts, and we begin to limit our faith. And in a moment where we limit our faith, the environment that we experience it becomes indeed 
a world of wilderness, a world of lifeless, a world full of things that need us to survive. But I believe God didn't bring us here to survive. But he, in this way, he says that he came so that we may have life and not only life, but life to the fullest. And life to the fullest doesn't call us to survive, but to live a joyful life that the Lord has given to us and begin to blossom in the gifts that he has given us, in the talents that we have. We need to believe the good report that the Lord is giving to us. When an environment becomes hostile to a point of death, that becomes a wilderness to us. And you begin to walk in despair. You know, when you come to that point of nothing can work, there's nothing that can work, you begin to look for an excuses. But you need to believe God for he will show up in that moment. Don't reject the supremacy of who God is. Brothers and sisters, the supremacy of God doesn't need any scientific factor, doesn't need anyone to confirm who he is. All around where you look, you see the presence of this living God. Believe God and look at what he did in your life and rise above the circumstances of the wilderness in our life. There's a song that says, when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back. You know, I guess that is why the car has got such a big windscreen in front of us and just a small rear mirror in front of us so that when you will look back, you see those things in a tiny form. But when you look in front of you, there is a huge view. There is a big hope. There's huge hope that God God can bring upon our lives despite finding ourselves in the times of wilderness. And Israel should have remembered their experiences with the Lord. And that's what when we are under distress, we tend to forget the wonders of the Lord. I believe all that is in my heart that if there's something that devil would like to do in us who proclaim Christ as the Lord and Savior is to forget or not to remember the goodness of the Lord. For without the acknowledgement of the goodness of the Lord, it is only despair. That's what happens to us. But if we can remember and not be like Israel after just taking a journey and forgetting the goodness of what the Lord has done in their life. So we should remember that in the moment of distress, the word of the Lord stands tall. They forgot that they crossed the Red Sea, that they have moved from bitter to sweet waters. They complained at the, at the Mount Sin. They took more manna instead of taking enough for the day. As we pray and say, Lord, give us our daily bread. They took more than they should have taken, engaged this, themselves in idolatry worshiping. And they failed to trust God into entering the promised land. These are people who have seen the Lord intervene in their lives while they were still in Egypt. But because now today they find themselves in the wilderness, they fail to take the responsibility and accountability of standing firm of what God says in their lives. And therefore, as the Christians, we need to take our accountability and responsibility and stand firm on God's word, no matter the circumstances that we go through. We are either affected or infected with this thing called COVID-19. But that doesn't take the fact that God in us is greater than anything out there. These people began to complain. They rebelled the more than they could please God. They begin to complain and rebel more than worshiping God. They spend their time in looking for facts than spending their time on their knees calling upon the living God that they have seen. 
doing wonders and miracles with their forefathers in their time when he took them out of Egypt, when they crossed the Red Sea, they forgot those goodness that the Lord brought to their lives. And they began to give up. How many times with your mouth you have declared such negative statements during this time? What kind of hope are you providing to the world? But when you find yourself at a place where life is not what you wanted, when you find yourself at a place where you lose the loved ones, what is it that you do as a child of God? Don't complain. Don't give up. And use words that can bring victory in your life. But here is your enemy again as a child of God. Procrastination invites trouble. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. Time is very precious. Once we procrastinate, we are asking for trouble. Israel needed only 11 days to enter into the promised land. But they became wanderers for 40 years. What is it? I could be this, I could be that, I was supposed to be there, I could have attained this. I sense some of us are beginning to ask or look or do that kind of introspection. And when you look in those lost years, they are not only lost years of your time, but those are moments where you should have hold tightly more on your faith and not just your faith but believing in the living God for our God is a consuming fire for our God is a living God he is God who can speak to us he is God who can hear us what is it that has happened in that wasted time be on guard in these times that we are in that despite any form of lockdowns levels that doesn't limit you to connect with God that doesn't take you as I said last week from spending time with the Lord that doesn't take you from believing God from on those small beginnings that you mustn't despise what God is busy trying to do in your life finding ourselves in the wilderness doesn't bring us to a point of permanency in that kind of an experience. But it must bring a new thing in us in believing in this God that loves us so much. So we need to guard against wasting any time in our life. For wilderness is just but a picture of life trials and sufferings which cannot be defeated by our own power. There is nothing that we can do with our own power. And our downfall in winning the battle, it is, again I repeat, it is in our attitude, secondly in our mind, and in our speech. In our attitudes, our minds, and our speech, that's where our downfall can be. Ephesians 5 verse 14 in message says, Wake up from your sleep. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. So watch your step. Use your head. Wow. What are those strong words that message uses? Wake up from your sleep. Don't waste any time. For because now is a moment of lockdown. For it's a moment that we cannot gather together. Some of us will have found it to be a time of doing things that are contrary to our faith. 
Some of us were found at that time to postpone even when the Lord is busy talking to us. But Paul says, may we rise and climb out of our coffins. For no two people can be in a coffin. We put only one. So that's how comfort even the dead are. But you, you are alive. Rise up and come unto the calling that the Lord has called you to do. There is nothing different than before lockdown in terms of your Christian life. But we need to rise to that moment for victory is certain and victory it is in our hands. And in conclusion, spring of life is within you. It is not only victory, but the spring of life it is within you. Can you see now that accountability and responsibility, it's not from somewhere else, it's not from your pastor, your fellow congregant members, but it is upon you that in the midst of wilderness, you need to be accountable for in that wilderness environment where there is nothing, where there is no life, Spring of life is within you. But you need to be careful that bad attitudes gives way into bad judgments or decisions that we make as people. We see ourselves as grasshoppers. We see ourselves as useless. And when God says you are mighty valor, men of power, men of battles, men or women of victory, but we keep on seeing ourselves as the spies that were sent only as grasshoppers. But I want to say to you that on that dry land, God says, I will make streams of water. In that wilderness, I will make highways. In that very same place where there's so much negativity, where there's so much doubt, where there's so much new things rising up, as they rise up, Know that in the beginning, he was there and he is there even right now. We are in the middle of a pandemic. It doesn't change God's word when he says, I am a healer. God remains a healer even in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the death that we are experiencing. Nothing can take his stance and what he has proclaimed when he says he is our healer. Wilderness experience is equal to all negativity that we can think of. For wilderness represents no hope, no life. So don't rebel. Don't talk negative. But sought the Lord with your heart. Sought the Lord with all your heart, all your mind. David says in Psalm 103, Oh, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Let all that is within me praises his holy name praise the lord david said even i walk through the dark valley of death which is equal to wilderness even though i walk through that we don't stay in the valley but we will experience the valley we'll go through stones we'll go through the streams but we'll come out of that and when we come out of that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me not for now but all the days of my life that makes me to make a decision and say i will dwell in the house of the lord as we said last week i will dwell in his presence i will be where the lord is but learn to live within the wilderness experience for it is at the wilderness that we learn that i should be no more afraid the fear the uncertainty that i'm having it's time for fear to be afraid of me, for Christ in me is greater than the one that is in the world. This is the news that I bring to you this morning, that we are in a distressed time, and everybody should acknowledge that. But that doesn't take us away from the love of God. That doesn't remove God's word, God's truth. Remains as it is that in the midst of all these things, 
He says, I have come that you may have life. And the life that God is giving us, it's life beyond what you, me and you we can think of. But may this morning, we can come and be a people or a nation that says, Lord Jesus, we are so desperate of you. We are so desperate of your love, your kindness, and your mercies that are new in our lives. As we walk through this wilderness, we know that you took us from a bad place. We will never proclaim and say that we wish we can die in Egypt. There are graves in Egypt. But we say, Lord, we believe that we are taken into the cleaner pastures for our shepherd is with us. May the good Lord bless you this morning. As you walk through this whole week, it's my prayer that with every experience that you encounter, walk tall and proclaim the goodness of the Lord. For he has given us life and not only life, but life in abundance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We, we honor your presence. We thank you for talking to us through your word this morning. Your word is like a double-edged sword, Lord. It is able to pierce through the soul and the spirit. It is able, therefore, Lord, to search our hearts, to search, Lord, where our emotions. It is able to take us into that place, Lord, that we are desperate of you. Father, I pray that you take each and every one of us to a moment of brokenness, Lord. Brokenness where we seek you, where we believe you, Lord. Close our ears and our eyes, Lord, only to hear what you say as our God. Father, we have heard so many theories, but we want to stand in the word of the Lord this morning. For we believe you are God who creates highways in the wilderness. You are God who springs forth the springs and the streams of water, Lord, where there is nothing. You are able to turn things into what, God, you want us to experience and live in it, Lord. Father, we believe and I pray that this morning I declare, Lord, that may we be people who can prophesy upon their situations. And Lord, we say, let the dry bones come together. For we believe that when you speak, Lord, things happen. Father, we believe in your way this morning. Give us, Lord, life in abundance. And may your people experience your peace, Lord. Despite being positive or negative. But we want to stand on your word this morning. That you are the healer, Lord. You are the healer. You are the healer, my God. Father, I pray healing to those who need it right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Your word doesn't have any barrier that can stop not to reach your people, Lord. But I send the word by faith, Lord, right now. That you touch their lives and give them life in abundance. And therefore, Lord, you say, may your presence dwell with us. May your Holy Spirit, Lord, guide us now and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you again next week. Be blessed. Amen.